Hey, hi, how are you? Good, I hope. Um, yeah, I bet you're a little confused, but not to worry. I'm not behind bars, obviously, and I'm also not going to jail. However, someone might be, so I suggest you stick around because we're going to talk about it. Uh, now, full disclosure here, I've actually re-recorded this video. This will be the fifth time because I've gone off on a rant each time, so I'm going to try and be exercise some brevity, but get the impact of what I want to talk about. I've lately been uh, featuring stories that are in the news regarding health and safety, and a couple of weeks ago, this one came across my desktop, and I have to say I find it very disturbing for a few different reasons. So let, let's have a look here. So here's the video, and it says, criminal charge in a young worker's death sends strong message, labor group says. And this follows up on another article that says this. Hedge trimming company director pleads guilty in a death of a young worker. Now, we'll talk about this criminal charge in a bit, but let's look at some background. First off, here's the young fella. Okay. Um, his name's Nicholas Chenier, and he died while he was working on the job for Best Green Hedges back in 2023. So just last year. Uh, in fact, this case has actually moved quite quick for an occupational health and safety issue. It's moved through the courts quite quickly and possibly because it's a fatality, but also too is there's likely a lot more to the story, especially when they're going to lay criminal charges. But let's dive into it a bit more. Um, and it says here, a criminal charge has been laid against a supervisor in the death of a young worker in Ottawa. This marks a rare but important step to preventing, preventing future workplace fatality, a local labor council says. Absolutely right. Um, on this note, honestly, um, we in Canada have what's called the Westray Act, which basically says, and you can Google it, and you can have a look, Westray, just the way it sounds. It doesn't matter where you are in the hierarchy. If you're in the C-suite and an upper echelon of the workforce, you can't claim that you didn't know because it works on the internal responsibility system, meaning whatever, if you have a high level of authority, that means you have a high level of responsibility for the safety of your workers. So let's go on. Now, uh, last week... Um, the uh, Ottawa Police Service announced that it had charged a manager at Best Green Hedges, a small company with 18 employees with one count of criminal negligence causing death. That's pretty serious. And so once again, the background here, uh, Nicholas Chenier, who was killed when his battery-powered trimming attachment touched a 16,000-volt power line while he was landscaping bushes between two homes in Manatic. Now, Realistically, um, I'm going to talk about towards the end of the video why this shouldn't happen and some of the steps that you can take as a company owner, a safety professional, or whatever to help prevent something like this. But anyway, let's take a note here. To his credit, uh, the owner of Best Green Hedges, uh, the director, Sheldon Best Green, uh, pleaded guilty for failing to ensure his company complied with Ontario's Occupational Health and Safety Act. Uh, and what he says, he believed his company was doing what was necessary to keep the workers safe, and he realizes that he wasn't. And so he ends up with a $45,000 fine plus a victim's impact surcharge. Now, just to note here, this $50,000 altogether, but when you put together the penalty plus the surcharge, does not, and, and the Crown Council went on record saying that uh, it doesn't put the value on a human life, especially a young man's life. There was victim impact stories read and et cetera, and I'll post links in the, in the description, and I encourage you to have a look at them. And you can also form your own uh, opinions, because realistically, I'm not about trying somebody in the court of social media. Not at all. Um, I want to use this as uh, an example of what can go horribly wrong. Here's a picture of the victim's mother, and uh, she's standing outside the courthouse, and she's wondering why um, the director ends up with a slap on the wrist, and the manager ends up with uh, essentially a criminal charge. Possibly uh, will end up with time in prison. Hard to say, don't know, but uh, chances are well, the case will start being heard in a little over a few weeks. So I'll try to follow it and, and post something on the channel afterwards. However, um, and, and there's a little bit here about the Westray Act a couple of decades ago, and it was at the turn of the 21st century that it came into effect. 
an accident at the Westray Coal Mine in Nova Scotia in 1992, which killed 26 miners. And the idea is it holds companies and individuals criminally responsible for workplace deaths. And so it should, because part of the problem is they're going to keep occurring unless so the penalties get tough, realistically. And full stop here for a sec. I realize that we all have work to do. I realize that time is money and profit margins are being squeezed to the absolute nth degree. However, now let's look at this whole situation here. We have a young man whose life is lost, a family that is permanently impacted. We have a director of an, a corporation and you know what? Small company, 18 people, $45,000 is a lot of cash. Could mean jobs, could mean possibly the future of the company. And we have a manager who's now facing criminal charges. So what would it have taken to take a couple of minutes and provoke safety? We'll talk a bit more in a sec. There was a total of, of three charges um, brought towards Best Green, and that was um, uh, including not taking all reasonable precautions to protect a worker, but also failing to ensure that uh, tools could conduct electricity. We're not using your electrical wires, but the big one here, here's a big one, failing to warn the worker about hazards and failing to give information to the worker to protect their health and safety. Okay, so once again, another full stop. In Canada, workers have three rights. They have uh, the right to know about the hazards associated with the work they're performing. So a big one right here, and that was exactly it. They failed to give the worker information to protect their health and safety. They have the right to meaningful participation in all the health and safety activities at the work site. So being part of things like hazard assessments. And then also they have the right to refuse dangerous work or depending on the jurisdiction, unsafe work. I've talked about those two, and yeah, you can have a whoops, you can have a look at the video up in this corner if you want to know more about those terminologies. Shortly after the case uh, was closed and the, and the uh, sentence was read uh, to Mr. Bestgreen, Thursday afternoon, Ottawa police announced that it had charged the 38 year old manager with one count of criminal negligence causing death. Okay, so let's stop and talk about this. As I said, there's four things that have occurred. We have uh, a serious problem with the death of a 20-year-old worker. His life was just beginning. The impact, forever permanent impact to his family. His mom, his brother read victim impact statements. And we have a uh, well, $50,000 hit, really, when you get right down to it, to a small company, which might jeopardize the future of the company. We don't know. And criminal negligence causing death. Uh, charge to the manager. So realistically, if the company had have also done four things, it might have mitigated this. So number one is to ensure that there's a firm policy in place along with procedures for hazard identification, assessment, and control, and that it's followed by all employees regardless with no exceptions. The next thing that they needed to do was to make sure that the idea of the hazard assessment starts with the project management or taking a new uh, job or a contract or whatever the case may be. It should view, be viewed by an experienced worker or someone that's experienced in planning the projects and the hazard assessment should begin there. The next thing is that the manager's staff or the managers, the supervisors with the organization, there needs to be a training process in place for them. A lot of times people get put in a managerial position and they're not leaders, they're not supervisors. They were just good at that job. And that doesn't necessarily make them a leader. It certainly might not make them a safety leader. So there has to be a process in place for that training and somehow to monitor competency because most jurisdictions in Canada indicate that all workers must be supervised by someone that's competent. And then finally, number four, number four, is there needs to be a good new hire orientation process in place and a monitoring process in place to make sure that there's no gaps and that workers are following and adhering to the skills and knowledge that they've um, gotten through that new hire orientation because you don't know if your orientation is going to be good unless you're monitoring it and following it up. Okay? So realistically, this was preventable. There are no accidents in the workplace. There are only incidents because an accident indicates like almost like an act of God. 
Okay. No, when we're doing work, that work should be planned and it should be executed with a plan and a good intent. And when we're not doing that, then that's when danger occurs. When we're not identifying hazards, assessing them for risks, and then implementing controls, then it's unsafe work. But not bothering to do any of that is dangerous. Okay? So, I want you to do me a favor. If you want to see more about hazard identification, assessment, and control, have a look at this video series up here. I'm doing a live learning series on hazard identification, assessment, and control. But beyond that, if you think that something looks dangerous and looks reckless and looks unsafe, then you know what? You should speak up. Because when you speak up, you're exercising safety leadership. It, you don't have to be a manager. You don't have to be a supervisor. All you have to be is a leader. Okay? Doing the right thing at the right place at the right time. Okay? So provoke safety. Take care. Bye for now.